We are at one of our Rock Your City events. We're doing them all throughout the county. We're just hoping to be the hands and feet of Jesus, that people see that, hey, God loves you, and, and we're the messengers coming to bring that love in a real practical way. is to continue to always be a do something church. This is my very first time actually doing this Rock the City. It was very special, preserving and saving this valley here. We're here to power wash, we're here to paint, clean up the classrooms, build sheds, build dugouts, and we're here to just bless the community and staff. This is where I get emotional because I give it my all. I come here and I teach, and I, I give my heart and my life for these kids day in and day out. And to see somebody else care that way for them and take their time, it's incredible. It's incredible to see people care about our community and our kids as well. We've had an opportunity today to clean up, to paint, power wash, put up signs, mop, and it's been an amazing day of community. This helps create better morale for the officers because when they walk in here and they see that it's clean, they really notice that. So on behalf of the San Diego Police Department, thank you and to thank all those folks that volunteered here. We're here at Cajon Valley Middle School revamping and creating a community garden space for the kids. We're doing a drip irrigation system, round planter boxes. I'm an education specialist here at Cajon Valley Middle School. I'm also a science teacher, so I bring my kids out here and we garden, we cook, we harvest everything. This is an amazing transformation and our kids are going to be really excited on Monday. This right here is what you're seeing as a form of discipleship. We are his disciples by the love we have for our communities, our families, and our friends. That's why we're out here today. Amen, Rod Church. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's give God some praise. Give him all the glory. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Hey, have you served at one of our five sites? You were part of that 716 members. We just want to say thank you. Let's thank all of those that came out yesterday. Thank them for their service. God bless you all. He made a huge impact for the kingdom of Jesus. I uh, want to say welcome and what's going on. My name is Travis. I'm the campus pastor of the Point Loma campus where I'm standing, but we also want to greet all of our campuses. What's up, online campus, our microsite campus, all of our other campuses throughout the county. Let's greet one another. Come on, church. Let's put our hands together and say hello. We're a big old family. We're, we're a big family and uh, we want to keep it that way. Our, our, our pastor is a little bit under the weather today and so he's getting some much needed rest and we're praying for him and so we're going to do that. We're actually going to pray for him as a church together and uh, we're going to pray for the message today. And I believe that, that God's given us a word that would inspire, that will motivate, that encourage us. And I believe that somebody will meet Jesus today, maybe for the first time. Maybe somebody will come back to him, but that's getting me excited. And so let's pray, get into God's word and spend some time together. Why don't you bow your heads all across our campuses. Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for the five locations that were impacted yesterday in the county of San Diego. We thank you for the 700 plus that came out that gave up their Saturday and said, Lord, I'm going to make an impact for the kingdom. I'm going to serve sacrificially. So we pray a blessing on them. We ask that you would touch our pastor right now, that you'd heal him, that you'd work in his life, that you would restore his energy, that you would fill him fresh, Holy Spirit, and that he would come back this next week with fire like never before. Uh, Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear your word, a mind to believe the message you have for us today. And we pray that in Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, Amen Rock family. Amen. Let's give God praise one more time, one more time. Because he's worthy. Hey, thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. You guys like the keys? I thought that'd be nice. Bring some keys out this morning, do something a little bit different. Uh, I shared a message about, uh, uh, well, about a year ago, more or less, 
with some of our Rock family, and it was entitled Show Up and Dream Big. Everybody say show up. Show up. Yeah, and, and you've done that today. In fact, you lost an hour of sleep and you still made it. So good for you. God bless you. Eight o'clock was kind of light. I'm not going to lie. They were sleeping in. Right? And some of you look like 8 o'clock anyway, so let me just throw that out there. Some of y'all look like mixing in with the 10. But uh, it's good to be with you all and uh, glad, that you, glad that you're here. You showed up. We had over 700 show up yesterday. But I want to focus on the second part of that message that I shared. Show up and dream big. Everybody say dream big. Dream big. Yeah, dream big. Turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm dreaming big. I'm dreaming big. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him I'm dreaming big. I'm dreaming big. I'm dreaming big. I'm dreaming big. We're going to be in... Uh, John's, uh, the book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 13. If you want to go there, you can go there now and just kind of just put your, your Bible tab there or kind of open it up on your, your Bible app, the Version app. We'll come back to it. I usually like to open up with a big statement, sort of like a sermon in a sentence so you know exactly where we're going. You have an idea of what we're going to talk about today. I wanted to bring it to you in the form of a question. And in order to get to that question, we have to imagine what's possible. We have to take the, the, the ceiling off of a, a limitless God because he is an unlimited, limitless God. And so we've got to uh, imagine what's possible. And here's the question, what can God do through you? Amen. That's the question we're asking today. What can God do through me? What can God do through you? And you have to dream big in order to answer that question. Could I lead a D group? Could I get into a discipleship group? Can, can I... Uh, serve in ministry? Could I actually go to a Rocker City event and make an impact? Uh, could I, what, what could I do, God? And you have to dream big. You have to imagine what's possible and ask yourself that question that we're going to unpack today. What could God do through you? A lot of people have dreams. How many of you have ever had a dream before? Like you dreamed of something, like a goal. Like, man, I just, I could see it, right? And that's what a dream is. You've imagined something, you've thought about it in your mind, you've maybe believed it in your heart, and maybe some of you were so bold that you, you told somebody and you shared it. Say, hey, I got this crazy idea. What do you think, right? Should I go on Shark Tank? Probably not, right? It's not that good of an idea. But we've all had those ideas like, man, I got this idea. I've been dreaming. The problem is that most of our dreams tend to be selfish, not selfless. Most of our dreams, they, they tend to be more about me and less about we. Can I get an amen, somebody? If you know what I'm talking about, we tend to go, man, what, what, what's in it for me? What could I do? What could I do, God? God, what can you do for me? Most of our dreams are selfish, not selfless, but there are a few people that when they dream, they know that deep down in their heart, they've been called to do something great. And they also know deep down in their heart that the greatest things always involve other people. The greatest achievements in life always involve other people, building up other people, serving other people, encouraging other people. Those are the great achievements of the world. They involve other people, serving other people. There's a, a, a book called The Red Bandana. Have you ever read the, the book, The Red Bandana? I encourage you to go check it out after the service. Don't Google it now So I got something to say. <laughs> but the Red Bandana, it's a cool book. I'll, I'll give you a, a quick summary. There's a guy named uh, Wells Crowther. And as a, as a young man, uh, on one Sunday morning, he was sitting out with his dad. And his dad was getting ready for church. And he had this uh, bandana. And Wells Crowther looked at the bandana and said, Dad, can I get one of those? And his dad said, Wells, I'm not going to give you the white one because you're probably going to mess it up. But I'll give you, I'll give you a red one. I'll give you a red one. And Wells was just like so excited, like they gave me a red bandana. And it kind of became his signature thing. Wherever he went as a young guy, he would carry it with him. As he got older, he had it with him. As he played sports in high school, he would put it on his head under his helmet and, and he would have it with him. His dad would take him to the local fire station and they used to volunteer as volunteer firefighters and he would have his red bandana with him wherever he went. And it was kind of gross. Like, can you imagine he like blew his nose and you know, who knows what guys do with their bandanas and just kind of, kind of gross. But this was his thing and he kept it with him wherever he went. And Wells had a dream. As he got older, he started to dream about working in New York at one of the Twin Towers and making money and doing investments. And he achieved that dream. Very smart guy, made his way there. But one day he called his dad up and he said, dad, there's just something going on. I don't know what it is, but something is changing in my heart. Something's different about what I thought I wanted to do and the purpose for my life. And he, he had that red bandana and he goes, remember, remember when I was 16 and you used to take me to the, to the fire station and we would volunteer? I think I'm called to be a firefighter. And he wanted to do that. He wanted to transition in his career. Before he can do that, and he was working one day in one of the Twin Towers, September 11, 2001 happened. And the first tower went down. And the second tower went down and his parents were devastated because they never heard from Wells again. 
And, and you know the story, you, you know you've heard, you heard the families, it's just a, a horrific, tragic day, but people never got to see their family members again. Some weren't even found. And months later, the media and the news, they were interviewing people that had survived and they said, as they found people in, in hospital beds recovering, okay, what, what's your story? How come you lived? How did you make it? And there was one couple, a husband and a wife, husband sitting next to the wife and they interviewed her and said, how did you make it? And he goes, she said, I don't know what happened. All I remember is there was a man and, and it was like he came out of nowhere like a superhero and we saw him with a woman on his back carrying her downstairs and he was gathering us, tens and, and 20 of us, and he, he carried us to a safe place and said, okay, you guys go. And, and when we turned to him and said, where are you going? He looked back up and said, I got to go back. And so they said, well, what did he look like? What was his name and, and, and what was his story? And she said, I don't know what his name was. I couldn't even tell you what he looked like. All I remember is he was wearing a red bandana. You see, Wells Crowther had a dream. He had an incredible dream and he, he accomplished it. But his most successful dream, his most profound dream was one that involved the lives of other people. And so I want to ask you that question again today that we're sinking into. What can God do through you? What can God do through you? A limitless God with potentially an unlimited vessel like you. What could God do through you? And I want us to dream big today, but I want us to do it to the eyes of a servant. That's why we're going to go to the scriptures today. Jesus was a servant. Jesus is a servant. But that word, if we're honest with ourselves, is a hard word. Isn't that, that word servant? Isn't it hard? Everybody say servant. Now, we don't say it often, and it's a hard word even as Christians and in the church, because in order to become a servant, it means that God may have to change some things in your life. Well, wait a minute, God. What do you, you want me to forgive who? Wait a, wait a minute. You want, me to, you want me to go apologize? You want me to go and restore that or resolve that situation? You want to take this away from me? This is mine, God. But in order to become a servant, that's what it may look like. And outside the story of Wells Crowther, the world doesn't give us a whole lot of great examples of people Serving sacrificially, giving up of themselves. Um, I'm on Instagram. Anybody on Instagram here? Instagram. There's some of us that like it, some of us don't like it, and and uh, you're, you're either on this side of the fence. That's okay, no big deal. You know who didn't have Instagram? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus didn't have Instagram, but he could have done it, couldn't he? Like, can you imagine? It was like you know, after he did the water into wine, he like, I'm gonna make Instagram now, and like, here's an iPhone, and right, it was just like one of the miracles that he did, but he didn't. And I, and I know one of the reasons why is because. Instagram tends to be sort of a comparison app or a comparison trap. And you look at your life and I show you my highlights and we kind of go back and forth and you feel worse and now I feel worse and just kind of putting those highlight reels. Jesus never compared himself to anybody. So why do we do it? Why do you and I do that? We should be comparing ourselves to Jesus. He's our goal. He's our aim. This year of discipleship, we should be looking to Jesus. I'm going to give you a, for the first verse today. We'll go back to John, but in Mark chapter 10... Verse 45, we'll put it on the screen. It says, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. God used his life. Amen. God used his life. Now, a lot of us like the idea of God moving in our lives much more than we like the idea of God using our lives. We'll say, God, move, but, but don't use me. <laughs> God, move. God, move that mountain. You know, there, there's, there's no mountain that you won't climb up, right? Lie you won't tear down, something like that. Shadow you won't light up. God, move, move. God, move, move. But don't use. Don't use me. Don't use me. We like the idea of God moving way more than the idea of him using us. But we, we, we want to we learn to be servants. And, and if you spend time with Jesus, learning about Jesus, you'll become more like Jesus. And, and here's the deal. This is why we come today. And if you're new, you're at one of our campuses, you're online, you're at the online campus, you're wondering, why am I tuned in? What's this all about? We come to encounter God and become more like Jesus. That's what we do. We come to encounter God and to become more like Jesus. But learning about Jesus isn't, isn't enough. How many know that? Learning about Jesus is, isn't enough because people's lives don't change because they don't know enough about him. People's lives don't change because they don't apply what they already know about him. Let me say it again. People's lives don't change because they don't know enough about Scripture and God. People's lives don't change because they don't apply what they already know about Scripture and God. It's not enough just to know it. We have to apply it, follow in the footsteps, live like him, love like him, see people as Jesus sees people, serve people as Jesus serves people. If you're here today, again, and you're new, 
And you're thinking, I don't even know what this is all about. I promise you, you've already encountered God. Maybe through a welcome, a greeting, or through a song, a worship, a worship song in your campus. Maybe through the word today, you're going to encounter God. Now, if you stick around long enough, you're going to learn to become like Jesus. Amen. Stick around long enough, you'll learn to become like Jesus. I want us to look at that story. Go back to John 13 where I had you open up in the beginning of the, the service. John chapter 13, we'll start in verse 1. If, you're got it, if you got it there, say got it. You're there, good. I'll open up and read it together. Start in verse 1. This is what it reads. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Now, let me set this scene up for you a little bit. This is leading up to Easter. What we know is Easter. It's Passion Week. It's Holy Week. And this is right on time because Easter's coming in a few weeks. Now, Monday, uh, Jesus comes in and he cleanses the temple. He flips the tables up and he goes, what are you doing? You're making this a den of thieves. He flips the table and he's got this righteous anger. And by the way, it's okay to be angry. The Bible says be angry and don't sin. Anger lets us know something's wrong. And Jesus comes and cleanses the temple. On Tuesday, uh, there's, a, there's a debate, a fight between the religious rulers over power and authority and who this Jesus character is. Then Wednesday, we don't really see anything in scripture. And then Thursday is this story. And they're sharing a meal. We, we know it as the Last Supper where we see communion. And, and I grew up with that picture in my, my, my grandma's house. How many had that picture, right? Did you think it was, am I the only one that thinks it was weird? They were all on this side of the table together. <laughs> Is that just strange? It's like, how did you pass the bread? That's just so strange. Just like, you know, Peter. Like, it's just strange to me, but it makes sense for the, the painting, I guess. But that's a story we find here on Thursday and then Friday. We all know Jesus gets betrayed. He's beaten. He's, he's, he's tortured. It was a tough week. And, and according to the book of Luke, because there's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bits and pieces of the story all come together. So read those scriptures together in its full entirety and the full context. And so in Luke's account of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he says that there's a fight that breaks out amongst the disciples themselves. And they're, they're arguing, Jesus, who's going to be the greatest? When you go to heaven, can I sit next to you? Or, you know, what, what am I going to have? Or what am I going to be like? And I imagine John probably thought it was him because we know that he, he was known as the one that was loved. He was the beloved disciple. No, maybe it was, it was Peter because, right, Peter was the water walker, right? <laughs> he was just like walking on water. Anybody else walk on water? Nope, just me. I'm the one that was walking and you didn't, nobody else. It was for 10 seconds, Peter. I was still walking on water. I was still walking. Nobody else did. Or what about Bartholomew? You didn't even know he was in the Bible, did you? You didn't even know his name. It was like, no, it's not going to be that guy. <laughs> He's not the greatest. A name like Bartholomew, it starts with barf, right? Bartholomew. No way. <laughs> And if your name is Bartholomew, God bless you. I just want to <laughs> throw that out there. If Bartholomew is here today, just special blessings for you from heaven. Amen. Jesus interrupts the, the fight going back and forth. And he says, I already told you who the greatest is. I already explained it to you. And in Luke it says, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. Everybody say servant. servant. That word servant is equal and synonymous to waiter. I think that every person right after high school should at least wait tables for six months. I don't know. That's just how I feel. I feel like there would be like a, a spiritual cleansing of, of pride and just imparting humility in all people. I used to, to wait tables as a server. Uh, and that, that word servant means waiter. Uh, at, from 15 to 22, that's some of the stuff I did. Very first job I could get. And, and I, I wanted to. And by the way, if you're thinking I can't find a job, I don't know what I'm going to do, I guarantee you can go wait tables. You'll be blessed if you do. And, and I, I started just as a bus boy. I worked at this country club and I would, I would go and collect the plates. And then some of the older ladies would come and pinch my cheeks and give me spearmint gum and God bless, you know, that kind of thing. And, and may, maybe you've given spearmint gum. I don't know. Maybe you're here today. I appreciate that. It blessed me. And I would, you know, get, cl clean up, clean up. And I got a little bit older and I became a, a server. A servant, a waiter at Outback Steakhouse. And, and I love steak. And, you know, you vegans and I, we may have two sections in heaven. I don't know. But I feel like Jesus loves us the same. And, and we're going to have a steak together. Um, but, but I worked at Outback and I, I waited tables. And then eventually I came to San Diego in 2004. And I worked at a restaurant called Dakota's Grill and Spirits. And there was nothing holy about those spirits. It's a different type of spirits. That restaurant's not here anymore. But I worked there and, and my job was to serve people to wait on people. 
And I would go home smelling like food. Every night my car would smell like food, my clothes would smell like food, the washer and dryer began to smell like food. It was bad. And some of you know this, this is your, your testimony, so I'm with you on this. And you'd get tips, right? And sometimes the tips would be great, and oftentimes people would, you know, your food would fall on you, or their food was messed up, and because you cooked it, you know what I mean? It was like your fault. That's just what a servant does. That's what a server does, what a waiter would, would do. And the money was cool, uh, but that's not why we did it. I did it because that was my job. I was a server because that's, that, that's what I, I was called. That was the title. That, that's, that's just what we do. And I want to give you the first point if you're taking notes. Write this down. A servant puts service over status. A servant puts service over status. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that. And so he looks at his disciples in this story. And because he knows that a servant, which he is, that's what he came to do. Serve God and serve others. He knows this. And so he looks at his disciples, disciples and he sees two things. He sees prideful hearts, arrogant hearts, and he sees dirty feet. It's kind of weird. But this is the story. This is the, the Bible. This is the gospel account of Jesus Christ. Jesus sees prideful hearts. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And he sees dirty feet. Let's pick up in verse 4. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And so Jesus says, I see dirty feet. He takes a towel, he wraps it around him, wraps it right around his waist, and the scripture says he, he took water and he began to pour it into a basin. And notice that we don't have this on a table today because to wash feet, you got to be down with the feet. You got to be on the ground, you got to be on the floor. And it says that Jesus began to wash feet one by one, one by one. He began drying them. Here comes this one, and here comes this one, and here comes Bartholomew. I'm going to wash your feet too, buddy. Come over here. And he begins to wash feet one by one. Now, something important to, to note is that when you and I come into someone's house and you visited somebody or someone comes to visit you, one of the first things you do, if they're cold, they're wearing a jacket and they come in and it's nice and warm, what do you say? May I take your... Your coat, your jacket, absolutely. May I take your jacket? May I take your coat? May I take that from you? In this story, in, in this time, in the Bible, you wouldn't say, may I take your coat? You'd say, may I wash your feet? May I wash your feet? It's just courteous to do it. But the owner wouldn't do it. The master wouldn't do it. The servant would do it because it was dirty, because it was gross. Because you've been, you've been walking around with camel's dust hanging out your feet and you got fungus and you haven't had a, a, a mani-pedi in, in, in any, any day of your life. So no, let the, let the servant do it. And this is what Jesus does. You know, my, my daughter, her name is Anaya, and she's going to be uh, coming up on four in a few months. Um, recently, just, just like God awakened something in her mind. It was so cool. Um, she connected her smell with her taste. Now, for us, we're like, well, you know, like, duh, that's, that's how we do it. But I got to see it happen. Like God activated that in front of me. And she comes one day with an orange, and she's like, oh, my God. You know, she's like, Dad, oh, my God, Dad. I can smell the taste. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, high five, girl. There you go, girl. Whatever. She's like, Dad, oh, I can smell the taste. And, and what was she, she was saying is, I can smell what it tastes like. I can smell what it tastes like. And here's some, like, some scientific just poof, on, on you right now, just big, it just blows your mind. There are literal particles in things that we smell, that part of the particles go into the back of your throat and allow you to smell. Now, let's not get weird, but just think about some of the things you've been smelling lately. I'm just throwing that out there. Just smelling and tasting, smelling and tasting. So was Jesus smelling and tasting fungus feet? I don't know. Maybe. I'm just trying to paint a picture for you of what the scriptures say was going on and the level of humility and servanthood that it took for Jesus to do that. And Jesus sees prideful hearts and dirty feet. He looks at them and he sees the character of the disciples, pride. He looks at the uncomfortable job, the cleaning, cleaning the dirty feet, says, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll serve them. I'm going to die tomorrow, but I'm going I'm to love them to the end, is what scriptures say. So here's your point number two I want to give you if you're taking notes. A servant puts character over comfort. A servant puts character over comfort. This was an uncomfortable job. This was not comfortable, washing feet. Jesus grabs the servant's towel. He fills up the bucket, and now he's at the ground one by one, washing the feet and doing the job of a servant, washing the feet of prideful men. But a servant puts character over comfort, and Jesus shows them what that looks like through washing feet. There's, um, 
There's incredible people in our church that serve. Many of you came out yesterday. And you, 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 you do things that, that sometimes nobody sees. And, we, and sometimes we see a cool video. And that's incredible. I, I want to just talk about one guy. He's become a friend of mine. His name's Braylon. And, and Braylon actually serves at our Point Loma campus right here. He's in our production team. And there are great people like Braylon all over this church. And you're probably one of them. So you can just insert your name in this story. But Braylon, in fact, was the one that brought th this out. And it was dark, so you didn't see him. And then he went away, and you still didn't see him. And so he did this without attention, without a video, without anything. And he doesn't even know I was mentioning his name right now. But Braylon serves. And, and many like him serve. And he was here early. Sometimes they get here before 6. I mean, you're all we're losing an hour of sleep, snoo hitting the snooze three, four, five times. Bra Braylon is serving the Lord faithfully every day, every Sunday, 8, 10, 12 o'clock service. And he was here just now. now get this. Braylon serves. Amen. But serving isn't what he does. A servant is who he is. Amen. Braylon serves. But serving is not what Braylon does. A servant is who Braylon is. And the same thing goes for you and for me. It's an identity wrapped into Christ. Serving is not what you and I do. A servant is who I am. Write that down. That's your third point in your notes. Serving is not what I do. A servant is who I am. It, it, it's, it's the identity of Christ. And look what Jesus says at the end of this passage in John verse 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Everybody say blessed. 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 That word blessed in the Greek here, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but sometimes words just pop out and this one pops out. It means makarios. So that's the Greek, Greek word. I'm trying to pronounce it right. Makarios. Everybody say makarios. We're all Greek scholars. There we go. Makarios. And it means this, this deep happiness, this deep joy, this fullness of God. It's like there's a blessing on you, this makarios. Um, years ago, I was a part of a, of a message that Pastor Ricky Page did on this very stage. And at the end of the message, we had cardboards. And on one side, we'd come out and say, this is who I used to be. And then we would flip it over and it would say, now in Christ, here's who I am. And I was, I was like, this is going to be wonderful. I'm going to be blessing them. This is going to be, I'm serving. And, and I came up there kind of with a little swagger. And, you know, I, I had the best sign. You know, this is my mind. I was young. And I flipped it over and I was moved. And I was filled with something that I had never been filled with before. Something kind of fell on me. And, and the, the only way I can describe it was makarios. This, this deep blessing, this deep happiness that came from, 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 from the Lord. And I began to, to be emotional. I, was, I think we have that picture of, of, of that moment. This is right afterwards. There's some of the signs there. You see them on the screen. I'm in the blue shirt with the backwards hat. Now, what's cool about that moment, serving people and serving others, is what happened years after that. Look at the young woman right beneath me there with the dark hair golden tan skin and the blouse that swoops down with a swoop neck. That became my wife. She was serving. I was serving. I thought I was doing something for the church. I'm like, I'm doing this for you, Lord. But, but here's what we know. When you serve others, God will change lives. Usually the first life changes your life. Amen. And God changed my life in such a profound way. And the only way I can describe it was Makarios, this deep, deep blessing, this deep, deep joy. God's fullness is makarios, it, it, it was on me. You'll never know this feeling until you begin to dream big and ask your question, God, what can you do through me? Not for me, but what can you do through me for people, for your kingdom, for your church? And then Jesus teaches us two really important principles that we can kind of pull out of this. These are just extra. It's that Christians serve and to be a follower of Jesus is to be a servant. Christians serve. And to be a follower of Jesus is to be a servant. And so I want to be really transparent with you today. My hope as we kind of end our last few moments together, my hope is that as we leave today, that something inside you, San Marco, something inside you online campus, uh, East County, City Heights, San Ysidro, and here in Point Loma, that something inside of you is stirred to move. And then to be used by God, to, to, to impact people, say, God, here I am. What could you do through me? I, I'm dreaming, Lord. I'm imagining what's possible. You're an unlimited God. And here I am as an unlimited vessel willing to be used by you. That's my hope and my prayer. And if there is ever a time to show the world what a Bible-believing Jesus follower disciple looks like, it's right now. It's right now. to show the world. And we got some things coming up that require some servant hearts. Um, Easter is on the horizon. There's going to be people coming that never come before, never been to our church. Uh, we have people that need to get into D groups. We're looking for leaders. 
We need people to serve and pass the buckets and greet people, hold open the door, hand, hand, hand the bulletins. At the Movies is a really cool series coming up in the summer and, and we're going to need people to build things. And all of those things require people who need other people to sacrificially serve them. I want to uh, end with this story and then we're going to do something cool at the end. So I don't want you to, to get ready to go yet, but I'm going to bring Joshua out to play the keys. I'll re- end with this story. Um, we have four Rocker City events throughout the year. And our biggest one is called Toys for Joy. You guys know Toys for Joy? Yeah, Toys for Joy is incredible. A lot of you serve. I mean, it's, it's the biggest outreach event in all of San Diego. It happens in December. I remember years ago, and, and if you've ever been, please mark on your calendar this year in December and come out. And here's what happens. People meet Jesus. They receive the gospel message. They go and they can get their face painted with their kids and they get lunch. It's free. Every kid get, goes through, gets a toy. It would just blow your mind to see the people that are so honored and blessed to be a part of it. And then as they leave, they're given a bag of groceries. And then at our Lincoln site, we give away clothes. And I remember uh, several years back standing in the room with the clothes. And they were distributing clothes to anybody that wanted to come. Families could come and single parents could come. And there was one single mom with her son. And they walked into the room with, with all the clothes. And I was thinking, man, this guy's going to get hooked up. There were some cool Nikes that I saw that hopefully he'd get those and get some shorts, a shirt, and some gear. And they went out, him and his mom, and they picked out some clothes. And he went and picked out a pair of slacks and a dress shirt. And I remember thinking, what in the world did you do that for? <laughs> Why wouldn't you pick out something cool? And so I went up and asked the mom and said, hey, you know, you can pick anything in here. Did you know that? She goes, yeah. Well, why do you pick slacks in a, in a dress shirt? And she said, well, today's Saturday and two days will be Monday. And when he goes back to school, Monday is dress for success day. And he's got nothing. But because of you, this church, because of Jesus. And somebody said, God, what could you do through me? And so the question as we end is again, what could God do through you? We say, Lord, here I am, use me. And and we know that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And God is looking for faithful people. And just imagine that boy walking with pride, walking with joy. Maybe it was Makarios, step fullness. But it came because a few people said, Lord, what what could you do? What could you do through me? And here's what Jesus says about that in Matthew 25. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? There it is. When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, it's as if you did it for me. And so when you serve and when you sacrificially say, Lord, what could you do through me? It's as if you're doing it for Jesus. So let's dream big today. Let's wrap up our time by by dreaming and say, okay, Lord, what's my red bandana? What's the the thing? If if I just go, Lord, what could you do through me? If I just make myself available, you're a limitless God. And if I allow you to use me as an untapped, limitless vessel, what could you do through me? Do you believe that God can use you to do powerful things? Do Do you believe that God can do immeasurably more than you can ever ask or imagine him for? I want us to stand up together, all of our campuses. Why don't you all stand up right here in Point Loma. All of our sites, all of our campuses. I want us to stand together. And I don't want anybody to leave. This is not permission to leave. In fact, let me say this and then we'll, we'll do this together. We're going to do a declaration together. And we're going to say it with all of our heart, all of our passion, like we mean it. And we're good at this. We do this as a church, don't we? And we're, we're, we're claiming truth over our lives, claiming truth over our kids, claiming truth over our church and our city. And at the end of that, we're going to give somebody an opportunity to meet Jesus. And can I challenge you to not leave? It it breaks my heart when people leave. Now, you got to go to work. I get it. you got a family emergency. I get it. And no one's out here trying to police people. But I'm just saying, if you could just stick around. Because this is so good. And someone's going to go from this side of eternity into this side of eternity. And it will be incredible. And you get to be a part of it. And... (laughs) And I'm kind of happy I get to be the bad guy because our pastor is so gracious. And Easter's coming and just don't want there to be people leaving as people enter into the kingdom of God. And we want to read this together. It's a declaration. I want to read it about our heart to be a servant. You can put it up on the screen and we're going to say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Because God has called me to serve my generation. I will value worship over wealth. Come on. We over me. 
Character over comfort, service over status, and God's purposes over possession, positions, popularity, and pleasure. Come on, let's pick it up, church. To my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I say, however, whenever, and whatever you ask me to do, my answer in advance is yes. Come on, church. To my Lord. We'll go to the next one. There's more. I know there's more. They got more for us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They got more, they got more, they got more. I'm going to read it over you. I'm going to read it over you. Wherever you lead and whatever the cost, Lord. This is on behalf of us, Lord. I'm ready anytime, anywhere. I want to be used by you in such a way that on that final day, I will hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in and let the eternal celebration begin. Come on. Let's give God praise today. Let's give God praise today. Amen. Let's grab a seat. Two minutes. Grab a seat. Two minutes. Don't leave. Here we go. There's somebody at one of our campuses, somebody watching online that needs to enter into a relationship with Jesus. You're probably thinking, man, I'm dreaming big. I'm imagining what God can do. I'm with you there, Pastor. I, I got it. But when I dream, I, I just want hope. I just want freedom. I just want grace. Today's your day to receive that. And so everybody's heads are bowed, eyes closed right now. Nobody getting up, nobody moving around. This is not time to go. This is time to pray. And don't just listen to me pray. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, pray with me. Pray your own prayer for those that are about to pray this for the first time. Everybody's heads bowed, eyes closed. If you need to receive Jesus and to begin a relationship with him, just pray this in your heart. Jesus, I love you. God, I believe that you sent your son to die for me. And he paid for my sin on the cross. And he conquered death through the resurrection. Jesus, come into my life, fill me up. Take the old life and make me brand new. I love you. In just a moment, I'm going to invite anybody that prayed that prayer to stand to your feet. Whether you're here in Point Loma, you're watching online, you can stand right where you are. If you're driving a car, watching this later, pull over and stand up. If you're at one of our campuses, in a moment, I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, I want you to stand with boldness and with confidence and with courage because it does take courage. There's nothing simple or easy or timid about the Christian life. It is the most bold life. It is the most daring life. The most courageous life is to follow Jesus. So on the count of three, everybody get ready. I want you to stand if that's your prayer today. No one moving. One, two, Three, stand to your feet right now. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, come on, come on. Good, 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 good. God bless you, God bless you. Good, good, good. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death. And I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior. We want to know and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you and we'll see you in heaven.